21 universities in Ontario and four in the city of Toronto. Students are required, and this is where it gets a little complex. The students probably understand this better than the parents, but basically you have to have four university admission in Ontario, six grade 12 university or what we call university slash college courses, and that's what the M designation. The 12U means university preparation and the M, uh, 12M are also university preparation, but you can use them for college admission as well. Now, it's very difficult. A lot of people will say, well, what if I want to study business? What do I need? I can give you a general idea, but in order to really know what you want to, you know, if, depending on the university you want to go to, you need to look those, that information up in a very specific way. Because it can vary from university to university, and it can vary from program to program. What I do say, though, about um, the preparation for programs is I get, I'm going to give you this evening um, a fairly structured idea of what's the, the highest level of requirement. In other words, for example, for business studies at most Ontario universities, you're required to have the grade 12 English, two grade 12 math courses, and then three other courses. There are exceptions to that. Some universities will accept one math. Some universities will, um, depending on where you want to go, will want you to have certain maths. And then there, you know, there's little mixes here and there. So it's, it's very difficult, as you can imagine, to try and narrow it down to something that's easy to present. Uh, you could be here until Valentine's Day. Um, and I can show you everything, but I'm sure you would appreciate that. Um, Cut-off averages. A lot of people ask me, well, how, you know, what does the student need to get in? Well, and I explain to them, it's everything between 72 and 95. And they say, okay. <laughs> That's very helpful, Ms. Benby. Hmm, you know? And again, it depends on the program. And it depends on the university. Because they vary enormously. And it's, it's important to know that. And so one of the things that I try to encourage the students to think about is, let's get a little settled into terms of what umbrella or direction that you think you might like to go to. And then we'll talk about universities. Another thing I get a lot of is, what's the best university to study this at? Now, as an educator and a, as a guidance counselor, that's a really difficult question for me. Because it's like saying, you know, if I say to you that U of T is the best place to study sciences, that might be true if you want to do research, if you're interested in going to certain medical school, if you want to stay in the city of Toronto and live at home, if you want, there's so many variables that go into making that decision. So it's really important. And if you don't mind class sizes of 500 to 1,000 students, in your first year, if you don't mind having to go from building to building to building, if you don't mind you know, living in a big city. So there's all kinds of variables when it comes to making decisions about that. So I don't like to answer a question, this is the best university to go to for this, or this is, these are highly reputable programs, yes. But one thing I do say to students is that because our universities are all accredited by the federal government, they must meet certain standards to be able to offer degree programs. Now, I was talking to one of my uh, young advisees who's <coughs> from China, and uh, I asked her, and I explained that to her, and she said, oh, that's very interesting. She's a lovely young lady. She said, and I said, what's it like in China? And she said, it's not like that. She said, there's all kinds of universities, and there, some are accredited, and some have, you know, but some, the standards can be very, very different. I said, well, that's very interesting. Now, I don't know how accurate that was, but I do know that one of the things that you have in, in, our, in, our, in Canada is that you do have, again, very standard approach, and none of the universities that you graduate from are going to give you a poor program.
we have a lot of students here who thought about traveling outside of Ontario. Uh, it's not a huge amount. I would say probably about 85% of our students are going to go to an Ontario uh, university or institution. But we do have some. And so I'd like to talk about this a little bit. Now when you're applying in Ontario, you apply on one application and it doesn't matter how many universities or how many programs, it's just the one online application. If you're applying outside of the Ontario uh, university system, then it's different. You have to apply separately to each university. So if I want to apply to McGill and UBC and Dalhousie, I can do that, but I can't do it on any um, centralized system. I have to do it on their website individually and I have to go to uh, applying in that context. So a lot of the students are, are a little nervous about making those applications. One of the things about Canadian uh, university applications is they're relatively straightforward. Not a lot of them ask for detailed information. When I talk to you about the U.S. programs, that's a whole different story. There's, uh, historically, their systems are much more complex in terms of the application <coughs> process. But for Canadian universities in general, the online application process is very, very straightforward. Now, one of the nice things that's happening uh, recently <coughs> is that if you do apply to another Canadian school and you also apply to Ontario universities, then there's a reference number that students get once they apply to Ontario universities. And if they put that reference number on their application, let's say to McGill or UBC or Dow, then they have the ability to access transcript information from the University Application Centre. And that is a whole you know, piece that's very nice for them. So they don't have to worry about getting transcripts, having them signed, getting them sealed, they ha and mailing them. All they have to do is put their reference number on that <coughs> application when they apply, and they can automatically be accessed by the university. And that's a nice thing that you don't have to worry about. And a lot of, the, and more and more universities every year are signing up for that, so that's a really excellent thing. A lot of people ask me about deadlines and timelines and things like that. I mean, there are 21 universities just in Ontario. There are hundreds of universities across the country. They all have their own standards. In Ontario, it's the same. This year, it was January 13th. <coughs> Students had to have their application in, and that's for all of the Ontario universities. However, if you're applying online to different <coughs> universities, the deadlines are gonna vary. So you may find, now most of them are past our deadline, are, you know, there. But if you want to apply to um, Dalhousie, then you have to look at what their guidelines are individually. And what I suggest for students to do is actually, I know this is homework, I believe it, guidance giving homework, but, <laughs> but what they should do is actually do up a little chart you know, they should have the name of the university, the program they want to apply to, they should have their website URL, they should put in deadlines, the cost of the applications. You know, these are charts that they, I think that they would find very useful and it would be helpful if they had a little bit of that kind of organization when they came to see me because then we can really get down to business right away. And now any of the things that they have of course, they can, they, can, uh, they can get help, you know, I'm willing to help them, but I do encourage the students to start t being a little bit more independent and taking some responsibility for themselves, because I think that's a very, very important thing to do. But, they're never alone. Okay? <laughs>